I don't know <laughs> what route this is. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. So I'm down here at Orby Harbor to do a first flight with the DJI Air 3S, which I just received from DJI and I have just charged it and updated the firmware. So I wanted to take it out for a first flight because we right now have very dramatic sky. It's perfect to put up this drone. Just put it up on the launch pad. One of the things that are really unique with this uh, drone is that it has been upgraded. The main camera has been upgraded to a one inch sensor. So we're really capable of capturing some really nice footage with this one. So let's just fly it out here. I did try it a little bit, so it's not completely 100% first flight here. <laughs> I did try it a little bit. Uh, we're yeah, down in the area with the wind turbines. Uh, I did that a little bit earlier today. One of the things that you're getting with this one is you're getting the one inch sensor on uh, the main camera and then you have the one or 1.3 inch sensor on uh, the medium telephoto camera that will allow you to zoom in with a three times magnification without any quality loss. So that means that I can fly around this spot here basically and film it while I'm pretty far away and I can get up real close camera wise. Such a nice place. See here you can see the lens compression when we are flying. Hey, look at this. So, and it flies perfectly like, uh, yeah, it flies like the previous model. It's as easy and as strong in the wind. We can just do the castle up here. So it looks like we're very, very close to this beautiful place. It is supposed to have 14 stops of dynamic range, which means that it is really, really good at separating or capturing the, the dark and the bright areas of the footage. Let me just show you a little bit of the sample footage that I captured earlier today at the wind turbines. So you can see how crazy good the footage look. Apart from the SD card, there's also an internal storage of 42 gigabyte. Let's just put it here for a second and switch it back to the main camera which is kind of the main attraction of, uh, of this one. See how far I was away, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Just wanna show you how much you can zoom in with this one. So now we're using the factor one, so like this. So I can go to the factor three here. So look at this, it's really getting close. <laughs> when you zoom in, I'm almost getting inside uh, this uh, little tiny castle. So that's uh, that's really crazy. You can see the video quality when you zoom in. Just know that if you're doing this uh, nine times uh, magnification, you are doing it digitally. So there will be some quality loss, but not if it's time three and you're using the medium telephoto lens, then it will be absolutely perfect. And right now we are shooting in 4K HDR quality at 60 FPS as well. Let's just do a few photos because we are getting a chance to do like a 50 megapixel photo. We just jump in under here under the camera settings just to see what we have it. It's a 12 megapixel photo. If I take that one right now, I will get a picture that is a pretty uh, okay. But if we zoom into it, you'll probably see uh, some of the details are getting a little bit blurry. So if I switch it into the 50 megapixel mode and take a similar photo in the same position, we can zoom that in as well and put them next to each other. And then you can see a lot more details on, uh, on that photo. But just know that uh, if you're using the 50 megapixel option, you will be a little bit more challenged uh, when it's dark compared uh, to the 12 megapixel version because the 12 megapixel version stacks more of the pixels together and makes it stronger uh, when you are capturing it photos in low light. There is a new uh, panorama feature included with this drone that is uh, actually quite nice. And then if, if we go in here and we select panel, we see we have the traditional ones. We have the sphere, we have uh, the 180, wide angle and vertical. But now I have one that's called free. That one is, uh, is uh, pretty nice. I can use the C1 and C2 to frame the panorama that I want. So, so I start by positioning the camera like this, and then I press C1 to capture the top frame basically of my panorama. And then I go to the other side and move the camera down. So I take the base of, uh, of the panorama and I press C1 again. And then if I press start, then it will do a panorama within this limitation that I just put there. And you can see it calculated that it needed eight photos to do this. So it's working on it, working, 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 working. 
So we just want to switch it back into a video mode here. And I can just show you the panorama image that it just did. And hopefully it stays out there. <laughs> so, see? I have a very nice panorama photo that is created with this new uh, feature. So that's, uh, that's pretty nice. It has a LiDAR sensor and it has uh, something called a TOF sensor on the base that should help the drone be able to avoid obstacles in the dark. It will also have an advanced uh, return to home feature it's that will allow it to return to home if there's low light and it has a problem uh, using the cameras. This is so funny. This harbor, it looks like the head of a turtle. Let me just show you. Just go up here. Now I have not watched because this is the first flight and I only flew it a little bit uh, earlier here, but uh, uh, I haven't watched the recordings on the computer yet, but it kind of looks really nice. At least here on the controller, <laughs> it looks really nice. <laughs> so look at this. And the beautiful thing about uh, the Air 3 and the Air 3S is that the flight time, that is, it stays in the air forever. Where I was a little bit disappointed, I don't know if disappointed, but um, where I felt that um, the original Air 3 had a little bit of a shortcoming was uh, that the main camera was not a big sensor. It was basically the same uh, sensor as the medium tele. So it suffered a little bit sometimes yeah, when I was out doing uh, more professional jobs. And especially the coloring was completely weird sometimes. So I hope they fixed all that stuff in this one because the one-inch sensor that is absolutely really, really nice. And one of the reasons why people were so fond of uh, the Air 2S that was because of the one inch sensor. So that one is back now. And you gotta love how stable these bigger drones are. Of course, you are sacrificing the noise level. So if you're flying around urban areas with a, a drone like this, you could run into some people that are getting a little bit disturbed by what it is that you are doing. Another real nice thing that I noticed here is that if I press the video options, I have a slow motion option, which I have on the previous version as well. But that one was capped at 4K 100, which was really weird. If you're recording in 30 FPS, it didn't really add up. But now you have 120 FPS slow motion capabilities in 4K with this drone. And if you need it even slower than that, you can bump it to 1080p and then you have 240 P available and that adds really really nicely to to the equation <laughs> if you divide 30 up to 120 then you have a, like a factor 4 or 25 percent slow motion so that's super super nice that that finally came around and being possible so just to show you the HDR capabilities where you're going to benefit from those is uh, when you have stuff like this where you have something that's really really dark and something that's really really bright you have, as usual, some camera profiles that will allow you to do a little bit more work to uh, yeah, your footage. I have basically three camera modes. So if we just, for the reference, do like 10 seconds or five seconds of normal mode here, and we switch it into HLG, which is Hyperlock Gamma, which is a HDR mode. And we have the D-Log M which makes the image like flat and desaturated. Both HLG and uh, D-Log M, you need to work with those in post uh, to make them look nice. But if you want to see how uh, you can make the D-Log M look like, you have this color display assistant, you can enable that. So the controller will basically color grade the footage for you. So it's, uh, it's in the colors that it will be on the computer once you process it. But it will still be flat and desaturated when you rewatch it. So you need to apply a lot in your uh, software to be able to uh, take full advantage of, uh, of this type of uh, footage. This is an absolutely beautiful area. I love to go here and fly around. In the old days, this was a whole community. Farmers and uh, yeah, that were all supporting the castle there in the background. Right now it's a guy that has a big shipping company in Hong Kong, I guess, that owns this. It's a Dane, so, but it's not being kept very well. So unfortunately it's, it's deteriorating, which is a shame because in my opinion, this is one of the most beautiful small castles that uh, we have around here. How beautiful is that? <laughs> I wish I could buy it. <laughs> then I should do something else than teaching uh, about drones. <laughs> so let's just stop it here. <laughs> I thought I lost the first flight video, <laughs> but at least I have most of it uh, until um, I made the drone return here to test out the slow motion capability. To re-record that part, basically what I did was uh, put it down here and then I was switching it into 
slow motion, and then 120, and then record. And then I was basically just bouncing a little bit around here. I don't know why the Osmo Action just decided to stop in the middle of, of everything, so. And I did include a little bit of yeah, flying using the 4K 120 FPS. So if you're flying a little bit rough like I'm doing here right now, if you're doing it with 120 uh, FPS, you will be able to slow it down and actually make it look nice. Just be aware that you are losing the HDR capabilities if you are using the 120 FPS option. Also, let's, um, let's just test out the maximum speed of the drone, which is supposed to be 19 meters per second if the drone needs to be compliant with the C1 label that's in the base. So it's staying nicely below uh, 19 here. So no worries are there. Let's just do it the other way. Just to make sure that we are not fighting the wind or getting help from the wind. See. So it's staying nicely below uh, the threshold of 19 meters per second. Let's switch it into normal video mode here. And then we can enable the return to home just to show you that part as well. I tried it a little bit uh, earlier that uh, it, it's not, it, it's refusing to land on the roof. It's actually pretty precise, but it stops around, yeah, I don't know, half a meter above the roof. And then it's just hovering there. And it's saying that it's unsuitable to land on, I don't know <laughs> what route this is. <laughs> so, that's interesting. So, let's see, it goes, yeah. So, now it's centered itself, and then it goes down, and then it stops saying, no, I can't do it, I can't do it, I won't do it, I won't do it, I won't do it. But then I force you to do it. So, <laughs> it came down pretty precisely on the roof. So that's uh, absolutely no worries there. All right, that's good. So we have the first flight in the house and uh, it has been an absolute pleasure uh, operating this drone. I managed to do it without being busted flying this drone. It's a little bit easier with the Air 3S because we, if it's airborne, nobody can really tell the difference if it's the original Air 3 or if it's the Air 3S. So that part is uh, significantly easier to handle than uh, with some of the other drones that I have been running into problems with. So if you missed the video where my NDA with the DJI almost got busted because somebody was interrupting my testing while I was testing the DJI Neo, I'll make sure to link that video from the end card, as well as uh, some of the other videos that I am going to make uh, with the Air 3 S. So if you're watching this video a little bit down the line, I'll make sure to uh, yeah to add all the other videos that I'm doing about uh, this drone, the Air 3 S, and uh, make sure to include that on this playlist. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching, and I'll be seeing you on the next one.